Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It's good. Yes. She can't see you. She's right there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, I'm so excited to be here in the house of the Lord, excited to see you. I'm thankful that you have joined us this morning for this time of praise and worship unto the Lord. Praise God. Psalms 117 says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness. Kindness. It's great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. We are here to exalt his name. Hallelujah. Because he is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he desires. He requires all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be in my righted mind this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God on my left and on your right. Praise God. They are our seniors and they're looking very beautiful this morning. And today is known as International Seniors Day. Praise God. And today we are also going to recognize and celebrate them and thank God for them. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be a senior. And I'm also a senior. And I give God thanks for sparing my life that I can experience this stage in my life. There's nothing to regret about. There's no regret in being a senior. Right, Pastor? There's no regret in being a senior. Praise God. Because many were not privileged enough to see this stage in, in life. Praise God. Can you please stand? And we are happy to have our visiting pastor, Pastor Campbell and his wife. And I know that Bishop Sobrine is going to recognize them uh, um, some more during our service this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and let us begin to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Let him know how much you appreciate him being Lord of your lives, how much you appreciate him. Hallelujah. For allowing you to be in his house another time. Hallelujah. To lift up and to exalt his name. At this moment, the, the worship team is going to lead us in a consecration song. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. Chances of hope. Hallelujah. God search through heaven. And couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed that would buy eternal life for you.
church. Good morning. I'm here to read the lesson. And as you know, everyone know the definition of the word senior. What senior means, right? Amen. <laughs> you go to high school and you get to the 12th grade. And it's your final four years of high school. You're a senior. You go to college and it's four years of college, your last year, you're a senior. And then you go into the workforce and you hear about seniority. You can't get that week of vacation because I have seniority over you. Then you go, then you work, and then it's time for retirement. And that's where the long senior years come in. And thank God we are here and we, because you have short senior life, long senior life. Amen. And thank God we are here today and we can celebrate our senior years. Amen. We are still going. Thank God. Well, I'm not here to give the word. I'm here to read. I'm here to read the lesson. And... Please turn your Bibles and your devices with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 46, starting at verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, that des what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear, in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Eleven and last, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Here ended the reading of God's holy word, and we say amen. Amen. Pray. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. God has been so good. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm so happy to be in church today. Praise God. Look, I don't know what happened over this side. I'm wondering what happened to this side. Today is a special service. I'm expecting to see this church full up this morning. But thank God. You know what happened? Jesus is here. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is in the house. And I'm so happy to know that Jesus is in this house. Today is Seniors Day. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. To lead you in prayer. And I know that God is in this house. We're going to trust God for a great things this day. Because I know he is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. 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 That's why we are here this morning. Standing on holy ground. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to bow our heads and we're going to go straight into prayer. Eternal God, we thank you today because you are so good. You are so merciful. You are so loving. You are so kind. There is none like unto you. So we come humble. Humble before you this morning. Just to lift up praises and adoration. And magnify the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. Lord, you are alone are worthy. Worthy to be praised. From the uprising of the sun until the going down. You are still God. Yesterday, today. And you will still God forever. Because you reign eternal. And we worship the King of Kings. And we worship the Lord of Lords. We come this morning, Lord. We put everything aside. We need you first. Lord Solomon, pray. Lord God, and when he prays, Pray, God, the power of God come down. The fire, oh God, fill the temple. Lord, the priest could not even enter into the house because the house will fill with power. Lord, I pray the same prayer this morning that this house will be filled with power from an eye in the name of Jesus. Cut the way for us this morning. Clear the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that fire will fall upon our people this morning Lord and we will worship you in spirit and worship in truth take away every fear take away every doubt take away everything that will distract us from worship and praise today oh God we give you this service we lay into your hands Lord and we pray a blessing upon this service today we pray for the leaders we pray for those who will take up part this morning in this service. We pray you will cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We pray God for the praise and worship. I pray that you will touch them even now as they are about to lead us in worship. We pray God that self will be slain. We pray that everything that is not of you, we are crucified it now under the blood of Jesus Christ and give them the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom Lord God and the courage to lead this service this morning in the name of Jesus. Remember Lord those that would play the music with their fingers oh God with their hands. I pray Lord God that you will use them. Lord God to play the instrument and play God with power and with clarity in the name of Jesus we pray this morning Lord for our pastor we pray God for the man of God as we bring forth the word this morning we pray God that that word will come straight from the throne of God we pray God that we put everything under your feet and the bind up the circumstances of the plans of the enemy and we pray that this service this morning we go upon as you wanted to go let self be slain and let Christ be glorified lifted up and praised in this house today is our prayer as we present it before you you have your way because you are God and you are worthy 
to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Clap your hands for victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that, Minister Ferguson. Church, come on, let's try that again. Clap your hands for victory. Hallelujah. Not because you overcame, but because Jesus overcame. So can we clap our hands with a victorious mindset for the victory through Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Daniel 7 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and hair on his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. We know that that ancient of days is the God who holds our lives. We know he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. And he will forever be God. He is the ancient of days. Amen. And we're going to sing to him today. This is God's time. Amen. This is God's time. Amen. So we've dedicated everything in this moment to him. So we're going to sing unto him. Yes. Yes. Are ready? Praise God. So if you need a little space, just slide over. So you can raise your hands, so you can clap, sing, and dance in the presence of God. Amen. Y'all ready? Come on, say ancient, ancient, ancient of days. Ancient, 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 ancient of days. We're singing to the ancient, ancient, ancient of days. Lift it up now. Ancient, ancient, ancient of days.
witching of taste. Oh, witching of taste. Hallelujah. To the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Every tongue in heaven Hallelujah. and on earth has to one day declare the glory and the majesty of our awesome God. And the word of God says, every knee will bow and every tongue has to one day confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So today we confess that you are Lord of our lives. God, you are Lord over our church. You are Lord over everything that concerns us. We place you at the highest place. Mighty God, you are the ancient of days. And we've come just to say thank you. Not just, God, for all your blessings, but for who you are. Amen. Anybody grateful today? I know the seniors are grateful. I can see it. I can see the hands raised. I see the smiles on their faces. But is anybody else in the house grateful today? For truly our God has been an awesome God. And he will forever be awesome. Amen. So this morning, cast your cares on him. Cast your burden. Cast your joy. He said, bring everything to him. Hallelujah. We've come to thank you, Lord. We did a portion of this song before. Many of you may know it, but even if you don't know, the words are on the screen. But it's beyond the words. Because we've come with grateful hearts this morning. We've come with thanksgiving into our hearts. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts and into his courts with praise. And God, we've come just to praise you. This is your moment and we've come to honor you. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord. And more importantly, thank you for who you are to us, in us, and through us. The ancient of days, we bless you. Hallelujah. I come before you today. There's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. For all you've given to me. Yes, God. And for all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Can we do that again? Say, I come before you today. I come before you today. There's just one thing that I want to say. There's just one thing that I want to say. And that is thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me. For all you've given to me. And for all the blessings that I cannot all see. The blessings that I cannot see. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise. With an outstretched arm. I will bless your name. in my life you took my darkness and gave me your life thank you Lord thank you Lord anybody can testify you took my sin and my shame you took my sin and my shame you took my sickness and healed you all took my pain my sickness and healed all my pain anybody Thank you, Lord. Oh, with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise. With an outstretched arm. I'll bless your name. And thank, and thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. 
for all your blessings Lord we're so grateful for your goodness toward us we're thankful for salvation we're thankful for freedom we're thankful for your light today we thank you for your healing oh God we're thankful Lord that you love us with an everlasting love hallelujah can we just slow it down just a little bit for all you've done in my life you took my darkness and gave me your light Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You took my sin and my shame. Can we testify today? You took my sickness and heal all my pain. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I've got no one else to thank but you. With a grateful heart, say, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched heart, I'll bless your name. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just come to thank you. If we don't do anything else this morning, God, we just come to say thanks. We've come to praise you, God, because you are the Alpha and Omega. Because you are the end of all and you are the beginning of all things and from you are all things God and to you this morning we lift up our praise we lift 
lift up our worship. We raise our thanksgiving to the all-wise, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-present God who was and is and will forever be. Hallelujah. We exalt you today, Lord God. And we ask you, Father, here in your house, in your presence, God, that you just do what you want to do. Help us to honor you, Father, in a way that pleases you. God, if there's any distraction, anything weighing us down, this morning we push it aside as we recognize the sovereign God, as we recognize the holy God that you are, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We've come to worship you, God. So let our praises rise before you. Let our worship rise before your throne as a sweet-smelling savor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May, may you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill. Fire. Set me on fire from the inside, from the inside, from the inside, from the inside. Let praises rise, let praises rise from the inside, from the inside, from the inside, from the inside. In every song that we sing, in the meditation in the of our hearts, of me. me, come fill my life, God. Come fill my Take life. Take full control as we yield everything unto from you. From the inside, from the inside, from the inside of me, of me. and set me on fire. Set
God. Fill I overflow with the presence of God, with your spirit, with your anointing, God. Yes, Lord. Fill my life, fill my life, fill my life. Every facet of my being, God. Let your consuming fire, God. Let your presence, let your spirit just fill me, God. Somebody say, fill me. desires God and we believe that you will answer we believe oh God that you are even in this moment filling our hearts that you are transforming the way that we think God you're opening the eyes of our hearts that we can see you in a new light thank you God that you are the light of our lives and we pray, Lord, that you receive the glory and honor because all we want is for you to be glorified. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to lift up one more song to God. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Can we just say that together? God, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy of all our worship. Lord, you are worthy of our adoration. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you. Awesome God, you are worthy. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. You're so worthy, so worthy. Mighty God, we give you the glory. It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore worthy worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy, worthy. 
worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be, be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name. You're the name. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name. You're the name. 
your name. One more time, you deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. Worthy, worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. 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 Hallelujah. You deserve the praise. Lord, you are awesome. You deserve the praise. Lord, you are mighty. You deserve the praise. Lord, you are great. You deserve the praise. You are the Alpha and Omega. You deserve the praise. You are God who is in full control. You are amazing. You deserve How excellent is your name in all the you earth. Deserve you are the Lord strong and mighty. You deserve You are the praise. Lord mighty in battle. You deserve You are our firm foundation. You deserve You are our hope and our deliverer. You deserve Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. 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 God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord, in this moment. We magnify you, God, today. While your breath is in our lungs, God, we declare that you are worthy to be praised. While we're breathing your ear, God, we exalt you. We declare that you are all glorious and mighty. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.
Yes. Thank you, choir. <laughs> Thank you, Prince. Were they? Yes, he received your praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church greetings. <laughs> what a happy Sunday morning to be in the presence of God. And on behalf of our Bishop, Dr. Oliver Sobrine, First Lady Sobrine, we extend to you this morning the warmest of Ebenezer welcome, and we say, it is wonderful that we are together in his house and to know that Jesus is here. Jesus is in the house, so we welcome him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today, the United Nations Declaration of International Seniors Day, therefore, we at Ebenezer focus our attention on the value of our seniors. Here at Ebenezer, we are blessed to have the best seniors you can find. Come on, church, help me say that. So guess what? Today, Ebenezer declare our declaration is we're blessed to have the best seniors you can find anywhere okay all right now you hear that that's from our pastor i'm just echoing his words and we can say that with confidence because the wise man solomon said that the gray-headed senior is a crown of glory and you can find that in proverbs 16 21 and that is indeed who you are to us seniors, our pride, our joy, and crown of glory. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. You look beautiful. And we're so thankful to have you. I know we have some very important and special visitors today. And I'm just going to head it. We'll do it a little bit differently because I have the names. And we want to thank Sister Loretta and her team who goes out and minister to these special guests today. All right? So know that we have brothers and sisters all over. All right? And today we're so blessed. So on behalf of our pastor again, 
I welcome from the unique rehab and health center, Mr. Milton Burgess. All right. Mr. Robert Robinson. Mr. Roland Jackson. Mr. William Wilkerson and Mr. Michael Jolly. All right, with this special group, we have the dedicated staff and we welcome you and thank you for taking your Sunday and to accompany uh, the residents here and that is Ms. Tracy Campbell. Thank you, we welcome you. And Mr. Keith. We thank you for coming. And now I know we have some other very important visitors with us this morning. So I'm gonna ask you to please stand if you can. And we want to just extend the warmest of Ebenezer welcome to you on this day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do we have any other visitors with us? With us? Back there from St. Is it St. Kitts? Saint Whatever a small island, look at that. We have brethren all over the world. So welcome. And our seniors are looking beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right. So um, thank you so much. Um, did I miss anything? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got so caught up with just so blessed to have, to be in the midst of such beautiful people. Uh, so gracefully aged, Pastor. Please come. And thank you again on behalf of our Pastor for fellowshipping with us today. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God is good. Praise God. We're glad to be in his house today. And uh, it's been a long time since I've seen all of my favorite people in one place. I'm kind of tempted to say, let's do this every Sunday. I'm looking at some of them, and I think we need to kind of do an ID check today. They don't look like if they're old enough to be in that section at all. But, you know, every phase of a man or woman's life is to be enjoyed. And seniors are also part of living. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying that. I don't really have any intention right now of joining that group. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to you all. I would like to extend a special welcome to those who are worshiping us via social media. We are glad that you are in church today. If we have any seniors on our social media church today, God bless you. Happy Senior Day. There's a reason why this day was selected. And we'll talk some more about that later. I know the welcome was already given to Bishop Campbell and Sister Campbell. Happy to have you. I personally say thank you for being here. They are from the beautiful island of Jamaica. Amen. Hey, uh, yeah, behave, behave. I believe he's, he is in charge of ministerial care. Yes, yes. Very important job. And I thank you, sir and ma'am. Welcome. God bless you. We're going to have a great time today. Amen. Have a wonderful time, but it's time for us to worship God in our giving. Before we go any further, let me say thank you for your giving. The bus is outside. Did you see it on the way in? Yes. Come on, I want to say that again. The bus is outside. Yeah. Let me say something else. We have not yet paid for it. And you know that's true. Now you have not given yet. We have only collected 10% of what it costs. So I know that's, that's the tide. That's good. But brethren, listen. Many hands make light work. All of us need to put our shoulder to the wheel. That's it right there. All of us need to put our shoulders to the wheel and contribute towards this project. We need it. You know, we need, actually we need two buses, maybe three. If, if, if you would like to take our seniors out to sight and song like I want to do, the bus is not big enough. It's only 15 seats, you know? So we need two or three. Our young people need their own bus. 
with music and lights and decorations and everything in it. So, brethren, a church our size, one bus is not enough. So it is our church. It is our people. This is for us. So I'm asking everyone to prayerfully ask God how you can contribute to this. Amen? And after we finish paying off of this, we'll buy a next one. How about that? Yeah. To God be the glory. You're not cheering now, you see? I'm telling you, you Pentecostals are so moody. You know, you don't cheer when I want you to cheer. But God is good. We're going to worship God in our giving. Every time we have an opportunity to give, it's an opportunity to worship. As they bring the offering and place it on the altar, it was a time to worship. God sent the fire from heaven and the smoke and the sweet-smelling savor of that offering went back up straight to God. Today is a privilege and an honor for us to give. As you're giving in the offering, don't forget the tithe. It is holy unto the Lord. Thank you for your giving. The Lord says, if you give, I will give back to you. Full measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I want you to enjoy that blessing from God today. Bow your hearts and let us pray. Our gracious God and Father, we thank you and honor you and worship you and praise you for your good and loving and kind and merciful and gracious. Bless this offering to our bodies and our bodies for your service. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we sing that song, I Will Not Suffer? I will not beg for bread. The Lord is my provider. How many know he's our provider? David says, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God bless you.
the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't God wonderful? Praise God. I will not suffer. I will not beg for bread for the Lord. He is my provider. Praise God. David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Praise God. Thank you so much, worship team. Praise God. What good worship we are having today. At this moment, um, we have two beautiful young ladies, and they will be doing a tribute to our wonderful seniors. Good morning, church. Today we are going to be reading a poem called A Tribute to Wisdom's Keepers. In the tapestry of life, woven with grace and time, there stand the mighty pillars, strong, steadfast, and prime. Seniors, O oh, treasured ones, with stories deep and vast, today we celebrate you for the present, future, and past. Golden years shimmering like sunset's amber hue, you're the bridge to yesterday's guiding our way through. With hands that have labored and eyes that have seen countless seasons change, yet your spirit remains evergreen. You've walked paths we've yet to tread, faced storms we've yet to meet, yet with unwavering strength, you've made challenges face defeat. With tales of resilience, love, joy, and sometimes fear, you have painted vivid canvases of life across the years. In your laughter, there's a melody, a song of days gone by. In your wisdom, there are answers to the who, what, where, and why. For every wrinkle tells a story, every scar has its own tales of dreams traced, battles faced, and times you've set sail. But beyond the memories and tales in this moment, here and now, we honor not just your past, but the grace with which you vow. To so keep teaching, keep reaching, and showing us the way to live with passion, compassion every single day. So, so here's to you, beloved seniors, on this National Senior Day. You're not just aged to perfection, but shining in every way. Thank you for the legacy, the lessons, and the love, for being heaven's blessing sent from the Almighty above. Happy Seniors Day. Praise the Lord. I believe that poem was wonderfully written. And you know what? It was written by their own leader, Sister Dolores Thomas. <laughs> Put your hands together for her. Praise God. Wonderfully done. Praise God. And today we give God thanks for our seniors. They may not be able to do many of the things that they want to do or many of the things that they used to do. Praise God. But they are still willing workers for the Lord. Praise God. And at this time, we'll be honoring them. We have awards for them. Praise God. So please bear with me for a little while. I'm going to be asking our own bishop, pa Pastor Sobrian, can you please join me? Praise God. And Sister Dolores will be giving us the awards. Okay. Um. The Forest Award would be labor, the Labor of Love Award. And the first is given to Sister Beryl Pinnock. Praise the Lord for being one of our foundation members. Been here a long, long, long time. Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to see our folks who have been here from the beginning? God bless you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. And Another person. The Lord bless you. Sister Ivy Wallace. Yeah. Woo! I Sister. met her first with the with our trip to New Hampshire Avenue. Mm -hmm. First day I came to this church, she was there with her pudding pan. <laughs> fish and fish fry. Fish and fish and bami and everything. <laughs> so work hard so that we can have our church. Yes. Not able to do that anymore, but God bless you. We celebrate you today. Praise the Lord. One of our foundation members. Mm -hmm. 
Appreciate you. And you know what? Um, years ago, we had rally, something that we called rally, oh, yes. you know, oh, yes. a way of raising funds to um, purchase this very church you're in. And Sister Wallace, she was one of the persons who would raise the most money. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you about Sister Wallace. Stand up there for a minute. Sister Wallace raised more money than all of our visiting churches combined. Mm -hmm. That's a lady right there. Thank you so much. God bless you. Next we are backslide now, but please. next we're calling Sister Vina Barrett. Vina Barrett, she, another one of our foundation We're asking members. you to stand. You may not be able to I'm walk here, right now, but really. if you can stand, so everyone would be able to see you. I met her on my first day at church here. Amen. Has been 30 years ago. You're still here. God bless oh, you. Oh, praise Thank God. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, we have Sister Mesolita Harding. Mesolita Harding. Another hard worker. Another hard worker in the church. God bless you. Thank you for you and your family and all that you do for our church. The Lord bless you. And we cannot leave out Sister Elaine Brooks. There you go. <laughs> she's oh, not here. She's not here. Please give this to her. I think you know who it is. Next, we have Sister Francella Ferguson, and another Lord, great Brooks, worker for the Lord. For her hard work Sister in the Sister Ferguson. Yes, yeah, Sister Ferguson. Sister Ferguson used to cook for me every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the bake, Pastor. And the breakfast. And she can make a mean black cake. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Ferguson. You did it when you could. So if you can't do it right now, God bless you. Congratulations. Somebody needs to take her place. <laughs> Next we have Sister Valerie Harding. Sister Valerie Harding. Not sure if she's here. Okay. I met her also at this church. Mm -hmm. Faithful worker. 30 years ago. She's still here. Praise God bless you, God. Sister Harding. Okay. Another award, Wisdom Keeper Award, and this is going to Reverend Winston Ferguson. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Not only wisdom, but hard work. Yeah. Yes, in our last billing, it, was, it is it is 105 degrees inside the building. And Brother Ferguson is there flat on his, his back with a cooler and his tools in his hand working on the church. God bless you. Can't do it anymore. But thank you that you did it when you could. We will never forget you. Praise the Lord. Just give him one. According to your name. We, we kind of went a little bit out of order. So we'll, we'll bring it down to you if you don't mind. Thank you. Hold on. Yeah, we have um, this person here. Okay, can we just sing a song and as we get the certificates in order? Just one second, please. So just we have this for you, Jackson. Just give us the one that you have. Mm -hmm. And may I say something about this person? She told me just last night about, she told me last night, this one, um, a worthy, how pastor once gave her $5, and she multiplied that $5 and brought in over $1,000. I'm going to sit with this lady and let her tell me how to multiply my $5 for the church. I got for the church. more for you today. <laughs> this is Gertrude Jackson. Come on, come on quickly. Yeah. I, I make sure I got five dollars. In fact, I can give you twenty if you're gonna do that much. Multiply. God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and all that you do. Appreciate you very much. Another worker like Sister Jackson is Sister um, Barbara Sitman. Sister Barbara Sitman. She's not here, but she's a hard worker as well. Praise the Lord and thank God. She bought instruments for our church. She bought that nice uh, communion table and always doing the work of the Lord. God bless you. Could you, I'm sure you know who she is. Could you give it to her for me, please? And she's probably watching via social media. God bless you, Sister Barbara. Thank you for your hard work. Oh. 
The next category is faithful prayer warrior, leaders who serve weekly on the midday prayer line. So we have Sister Carol Bishop. It's the Bishop. No pastor. My favorite of all favorites. God bless you. Proud of you. Thank you so much for coming to our church and for all that you do. The Lord bless you. There's a word in her. There's next, an anointing in her life as well. Next we have Carmen, Sister Carmen Francis. Sister Carmen Francis. She's not here today. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. God bless you, Sister Francis. Thank you for what you do on our midday prayer line. Mm -hmm. Next we have Yvette, Sister Yvette Shaw. Sister Yvette Shaw, one of our prayer warriors, indeed. There you go, God bless you, and thank you so much. Appreciate you. Sister Dolores Park. Dolores Park, Dolores Park, also one of our prayer warriors, a lady with a golden voice, beautiful. Thank you for your singing ministry, for your prayer ministry, for reading the scriptures, and for being part of our church. We appreciate you. God bless you. Yes. Sister Shirley Gray. Shirley Gray. Sister Shirley Gray. One of our prayer warriors, you know? And we have many. Praise God. Next, we have the Golden Year Award. And the first goes to Sister Binnie Morris. Are you here? No. Sister Morris is also one of our foundation members. Mm -hmm. Been here from the beginning, and we appreciate her. She's been in the church through thick and thin, through everything. Hard worker, thank God for you. God bless you. If you're watching via social media, we appreciate you and your service here at the church. Next we have Sister Mavis Johnson. Sister Mavis Johnson, Sister Mavis Johnson. Appreciate her, she's not here today, but thank you. Thank you for being one of our- Her daughter is here. Oh, she's coming. Okay. All right. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I've come to you, Sister Johnson. <laughs> Sister Johnson is indeed my favorite. <laughs> Listen. Pastor's going Listen. to get in trouble today. This is the only person <laughs> that tells me every day, Pastor, I love you. <laughs> and my love is real, isn't that right? <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. Thank you. I always like to hear that because I know it's true. And we love you too. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him again. I love my There you go. Next we have Sister Joyce Graham. All right. I think she's looking at the service Sister online. Joyce Graham, God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your service at Ebenezer. We love and appreciate you on this senior day. Sister Iris Olga Rose. Sister Iris Olga Rose, there you go. Another one of our seniors. She is the only person that enjoys my preaching. God bless you. I love you, mommy. Next we have Sister Frederica Smith. Thank you, thank you. Is, is she here? Maybe we can give it to Brother Wayne. Oh, Sister Smith. Sister Smith, Sister Smith, Sister Smith. One of our mothers, our church mothers, can't come out as she would like to, but I guarantee her she's at home watching the service today. God bless you, Mother Smith. She's in Jamaica. Oh, look oh. at that. She's, she's still watching the service in Jamaica. Next, we have Sister Dolly Butler. Sister Butler, Sister Butler. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sister Yvette's mother. Mr. Butler. Take it to her. She's in the back. Yes. Okay, I can go to you. Yeah. There you go. I appreciate this, Mr. Butler. One of our faithful members, ever present, ever loving, ever kind. God bless you. We appreciate you. And welcome to Ebenezer. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, at this time we'll be recognizing the Faithful and Outstanding Ministry Award. And this goes first to Sister Yvonne Wilson. 
Yvonne Wilson. And Wilson, every Sunday, Sister Yvonne will transport some of the seniors to church and back home from church. We appreciate that, Sister Yvonne. God bless you. Appreciate you for bringing all these people to church every day. Keep up the good work. That's right. That's right. All right. The next goes to Maureen. Not yet. Not yet. Maureen, Sister Maureen Hayes. And Sister Maureen, she is very faithful to the pantry ministry. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right. I missed out two important people here in the Golden Year Award, for the Golden Year Award, Brother David Jones and his beautiful wife, Sister Thelma Jones. Yeah, let's welcome these wonderful people. Praise God, praise God. I love Brother Dave very much, you know why? Because he enjoys my sermon. Love. Please tell him that you enjoy my sermon. Wonderful man of God, and a very nice preacher. There you go. <laughs> he never enjoys my time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Sir, I appreciate you. I tell everybody. Praise God. <laughs> Next, we have Sister Ludell Dennis. Ludell Dennis, there you go. This is our church mother. Isn't that right? Thank you so much. I will come to you. And if you have any problem with Brother Mike, you know who to talk to. This right. God bless you. She's a proud grandmother. Yes. She also enjoys my sermons. A faithful member award, Sister Yvette Donaldson. <laughs> Sister Yvette has been here forever. Is the only Jamaican I know who cannot dance. And always dancing. God bless you. We love you, Sister Yvette. Listen, I can tell her that. I'm the only person who can say that. It's not for you. God bless you. We love you. Last but not least, very important. Founder, member, and strong pillar award. And this award is going to Sister Doreen Lambert. Yes. Can you put your hands together for her? Founding member, founding member. Praise founding Lord. member and strong pillar award. Yes. The last time we gave her an award for being the treasurer, I think it was 35 years. But we stopped counting at that time. So I don't know how many years she has been a treasurer of this church. Longer than I have been here. So we recognize your hard work, your faithfulness. Come to Maya, I gotta help her with this. Praise to Maya. <laughs> come on. You, you're not a senior, so come quickly. We, we thank God for Sister Lambert, amen? For her faithfulness, her dedication. She's in everything. Everything, everything that goes on in the church, she's in it. God bless her for her faithfulness, for her hard work, for her commitment. The only times when she gets upset with me is when I don't give her work to do. Uh, but, you know, thank you for all that you do. God knows what you do and your reward is sure in heaven. There's a bigger reward than this waiting for you. And we appreciate you and we thank God for you. To my help around you. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for all of our seniors. And can you please stand? N not the seniors. 
everybody else beside the seniors. Can you please stand? Let us show respect and honor to our seniors and put your hands together. Hallelujah for all of them and for their faithfulness to our church. God bless you seniors. We love you. We respect you. Praise God and we thank God for you. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Now listen, we didn't get a chance to give everybody who we want to give but there are others who are going to get. People like Poppy who has been faithful Ooh. cleaning the church every week. Praise God. Amen. And even Praise though he don't look God. like it, he is, he is a senior. He, uh, you know, he went, to the, he went to the office to collect his pension and they chased him. He said, man, you're not a senior. What are you, what are you doing here? But God bless you. He's a hard worker. We, we have other certificates to give. We'll do that next week. But thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks to all of you who work hard at our church. Praise God. Our seniors are looking very beautiful today. Sister Allison is sitting with them, but she's not a senior. And we give God thanks for you for working with the seniors. Praise God. And we give God thanks for the leaders of the senior ministry. Sister Dolores. Praise God. God bless you. And the others who assist you. God bless you. At this time, we'll be having a praise dance by our own Sister Tamaya. Baptiste. Please put your hands together for her. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We give God thanks for our sister Tamaya and for her ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Indeed, the hands of God is resting on her life. The anointing of God is resting upon her life. Praise God. We give God thanks. At this time, I'm going to be asking our seniors to please stand. And they will be coming at this moment to bless you with a special song. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for them? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. church be the church let the church be the church
your home get on board the master bid you to come seek ye the lord while he church be the church let the people rejoice for we said from the question we made our choice let the anthem ring out songs of is headed for home get on board the masters bid you to come seek ye the lord while he may be found he will carry his cargo Storm in the sky. Let the church be the church. Let the people rejoice. For we've settled the question. We've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out. Songs of church let the people rejoice for we settle the question we made our joy let the anthem bring out sounds of The church triumphant is alive and well. And I can feel that in my heart today. God's church is triumphing today. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for our seniors. Hallelujah. Bishop Johnson. Bishop, could you come for one minute, please? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. The church triumphant is alive and well. Give God some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah, I appreciate our musicians. I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate our musicians. They are the best any church can ever hope to have. Appreciate Minister Walters for preaching last Sunday. I understand he kept you until one o'clock. But it was all good. All good, all good. Appreciate you all. Thank God for him. Thank God for all our ministers. 
And like I said, you know, we, we didn't have time to acknowledge and to give service to all of our uh, seniors, but we will continue this next week, make sure we get everyone. People like Brother Stuart, who, oh man, I can't even, I can't tell you how many things he does in the church. And I think his wife needs an award because she has to wait on him every Sunday. She's the only person that is not happy about that van out there. She's not happy. Because once again, she got to wait on her husband to have dinner every Sunday. But I appreciate this fine couple. God bless you. And also, Brother, Brother David is a gopher. Everybody calls him. He's big and tall, and you think he's strong? So you all call him. You think he likes to drive? So you all call him to drive to do everything. Uh, uh, but David is a great help. I appreciate him. I want to encourage the other men to join the choir. Do not let Brother Short and Brother David be the most handsome men in the choir, like they were today. <laughs> Praise God. God bless you. It seems, it seems not proper for us to have a bishop like Bishop Johnson here with us and his wife and not allow him to kind of bless the congregation. Come on, sir. Bishop Campbell, sorry. What did I say? Bishop Campbell. Bishop Campbell. Come on, Bishop Campbell, just greet us, please. Greet us. It is really good to be in the house of the Lord today. Better to be among the people of God. And you know, the most important thing to know, the presence of God is really in the sanctuary. It is really a pleasure having my BBQ over there, black beautiful queen. We are just on vacation. And we decided that we're joining Keisha over there, the passionate fireball. It's just great to see what God is doing through her. I want to give special recognition to Bishop Dr. Sabran and First Lady Sabran. And it's just awesome. I am just, in fact, we are just blessed coming to be a part of this worship experience. There, there is really a barrier-breaking anointing right in this house. I believe that there is also a bridge-building anointing right in this house. And I believe that there is a body-blending anointing right in this house. And there is a blessing that God has been unleashing right on you. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. May the Lord bless you, greet you all. And Bishop Brian, God bless you. I am just blessed. God bless you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop. Appreciate you and your wife being here with us today. Praise the Lord. Now, some of our seniors have to go. Those from the uh, uh, nursing home that are here today, retirement home, glad to have you. I thank you for being here. I know that your time is short with us. You got to go back and get their medicine and, and all that good stuff. So we're thankful that you're here, and I pronounce a blessing upon your life. The blessings of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow be graciously multiplied unto you and to those who help you and serve you as well. Thank you kindly. Whenever you have to leave, please feel free. But for those of us who are staying, please bow your hearts with me and let us pray. Father, I thank you today for this time and this word and this scripture and your people. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless us today, visit us again with your presence and your anointing and speak into our hearts and our spirits as we come before you right now and beg you for your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very kindly. Today, I would like to ask the Lord to help me speak to you on this topic. You know, today is, today is senior day, it's seniors day, and I was thinking in my heart, what can I say to the seniors that would really encourage them? And this is scripture came to my mind. The words of David, David, David the king, David who wrote this psalm, Psalms 37. In verse 25, he said, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, 
nor his descendants begging for bread. David is making a declaration saying, in my lifetime, and he has seen a lot, if you are the king of Israel, it means you know what is going on in your kingdom. You've seen a lot, and you know poverty, and you know wealth, and you know all the things in between. You have experienced it yourself. And David had enough troubles for all the king of Israel put together. And still, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. You who are righteous, the word of God says, I will not forsake you. Not only you, but your children. I know one of the biggest things in every person's mind and heart is that God will help our children. The reason why you get up in the morning and in the cold and in the heat, go out to work and do the things you do and put up with the people you put up with is because of your children. Yes. If you never have kids that are so needy, you will be out in the French Riviera right now or maybe somewhere in Dubai. But you can't go because you got kids. And we want the best for our kids. Isn't that right? And God promised to you is, if you are faithful and righteous, I will not only take care of you, but I'll take care of your children. And that's what I want to talk about today. Say amen. Now, let me share with you my introduction. I, I, I read something today, and I thought it was interesting. I want to share with you. The U.S. population is aging. The elderly are becoming more in number than the youths. And you can see that today, you know. We, you know, where are the youths compared to the elderly? Well, the number of Americans ages 65 and older will more than double in the next 40 years. Reaching over 80 million by 2040. So imagine that. Look, here's a graph that shows you the green line is the elderly. The red are the young people or the children 18 and below. So in a few years, those who are 65 and older will be more than the young people. Too much pot. Too much junk food, maybe. I don't know. But the elderly is living longer. And what do you know? We are taking over. Did I say we? Did I say we? <laughs> hey, kind of strike that from the record there a little bit. But the elderly are taking over the world. They are living longer. They are doing better. They are more healthy. They are enjoying more of life. Many of them are skillful and skilled and working hard every day. Thank God for our seniors. Today, we celebrate them. And we say, you are not in the minority. You are in the majority. And if you didn't know that, please know it today. Yes. Older adults will edge out children in population size. People 65 and older is expected to number 7.7 or 77.0 million. Mm -hmm. While the children are going to be just 76.7. We are, we are, we're going to edge over them. Now, I want to, I want to discuss this topic today in four simple way, words. I want to talk about who this is going to happen to, what is really going to happen, why, and when. Let's look at these four words and try to use them to interpret the message that God has for us today. Psalms 37 is the Psalms that we are taking our text from. The Lord tells us as seniors, as people of God everywhere, don't fret because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, but trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. God is saying, here is how God is going to take care of you. Trust in the Lord and do good. And this will ensure that you live in the land God has given to you, and he's also going to feed you. God promised you two things, that you will live, you will have a place in this world, and he will provide for your basic necessities. That's the promise of the Lord. Now, 
Let, let's do a little bit of word study here. It helps us to understand the text better. When the Bible says trust in the Lord, the Hebrew word is batha, and it simply means to be boldly and carelessly confident. It's like a child standing on the dinner table, jumping in the arms of their parents. Don't care. Have no consideration of if they fall or anything else. They know that their father or their mother is able to catch them and support them. So they close their eyes and they jump in their arms. That's how God is expecting us to treat him. Close your eyes and trust him. Amen? Faith says, forsaking all, I trust him. Don't worry about how things are going to end up in your life, but believe that he that is able to save you is able to keep you and to present you faultless before his Father on high. Amen? God wants us to carelessly and confidently trust him. Don't care about anything. Just trust God. And you know, it says trust the Lord. And you know, there are many words used for God and the Lord in the Bible. Isn't that right? When God was creating the world, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the word God, in the beginning God, verse 1, in the beginning God, that word for God is Elohim, plural, the God of creation. But when God is going to create man, he, he, there's a different word. <laughs> The different word for God. That word is Yahweh. From the original YHWH, Yahweh simply means the self existent one. So here it is. God is getting ready to make you. God is getting ready to take 200 pounds of clay and mold and fashion the body of the first man. And then he's going to breed into him the bread of life. And the word he chose for his name is the original name for God. Is the name from which all other names are derived. God decided to choose a name that says he is the one that exists by himself. It's the proper name of Israel. It means the absolute and unchanging one, ever living, ever confident, non-changing or unchanging, the one who approves himself, who exists by himself, the one who needs no one or nothing for his existence. That's the name God chose for himself. So when God made us, he's simply saying, listen, I am making you now, and I have all the ability and the resources and the strength and all, everything I need to take care of you. I am making you, and I can take care of you. I am making you, and I can feed you. I am making you, and I can heal you. I can make, I am making you, and I can sustain you. I am God who exists all by himself. That's what God meant when he decided to make you. That's the name he chose for himself. Genesis 2 verse 7, and God, the Lord God, the Yahweh, Form man out of the dust of the ground. Now, what does this mean when the, Lord, when the Bible says, and the Lord says, I will not forsake you? Or when the psalmist says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. You know we got to do a word study on that word, right? In order to understand what, is, what it really means. What David meant when he says, God will not forsake you. What does the word forsake mean? Nizab is the Hebrew word for it. And it's used 211 times in the scriptures. Very popular word. Here's what it means. It means that you give up something of value to forsake. Whenever that word is used for forsake, it means I have something of value and I give it up. I have something that means a lot to me and I turn my back on it. I walk away. Have you ever walked away from something valuable? Joseph did that one time, you remember? Here's where this word was used, and I want to use one of these 211 scriptures. This one, Genesis 39 and verse 12. For example, Joseph left his second coat. You know, he had a first coat of many colors that his father gave to him. And his brothers, when they beat him up and throw him in the pit and everything, they kill a lamb and sprinkle the blood on that one and took it to Joseph, uh, to his dad, and said, look, this is what happened to your son. And his dad, Jacob, says, I'm going to go to my grave. 
in sorrow. Look what happened to my son. Falsely giving evidence that Joseph is dead. That's the first quote. I think that quote meant so much to him that somewhere along his life, he tried to get another one, <laughs> an important one, a meaningful one, something that will remind you what his dad gave him. And here it is, as he's working in the house, the wife of Potiphar grabbed him, and the brother left his coat and ran away. That coat was valuable to him. It reminded him of what his dad gave him. It was very costly, very important, very significant, but he forsook it, gave it up. Now, God is saying to you that I will not forsake you. That simply means I will not turn my back upon you because you are valuable. Are you seeing that? That's what it means. You, you're valuable. You mean something to me. That's why I will not forsake you. I will not give you up because you are meaningful. Do you have anything in your life that is so valuable you will not part with it? I was in a bank the other day, and the, the lady at the bank says, did you bring back the letter that your mom sent to you to put back in? <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you bring? They're reminding me that, yeah, you pass, you got to bring back that letter. You know, that, that letter, you told us about the letter, it's valuable. There are things in my life that are so valuable, I will not forsake them. And they're too numerous to mention. That includes all of you here. So the meaning of that word is, the Lord will not forsake you because you are valuable to him. Now, why are we valuable to him? Let's, let's use that word to answer the question. Why are you valuable? In, I, in one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 43, but now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, the Lord says you are vulnerable, but valuable. Amen? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you walk through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither the flame be kindled upon you. You are vulnerable, but valuable. All of us at some time will go through the fire. All of us at some time will go through the flood. You know, we, we don't have to look very far to find a good illustration. You know what's happening in Maui right now. What's happening in Canada right now? Wildfires are destroying people's lives and their homes and large part of the forest. And it's terrible. People, you know, they, they, they went and they dived into the sea to save themselves from death. Man, until now, until I'm speaking now, man have not discovered a way of living in the midst of fire. We have not discovered a way of conquering fire. And the opposite of fire is water. Same thing. We have not yet discovered a way of living under the sea. We don't have gills. We have not discovered a way of living there. And when water is in abundance, it washes everything away. Now, I live through Gilbert, you know. I am old enough to live through Gilbert. I live through Gilbert, and I've seen and experienced the devastation for myself of what water can do. We have not yet been able to control it. We can try, but when the water is strong enough and big enough and powerful enough, it moves everything in its way. So fire and water, even though they are the opposites, they are our two worst enemies. Our two humblest servants, but also our worst enemies. And God says, simply saying, when you're going through your worst times, when you're dealing with your worst enemies, I'm going to be right there with you. Hallelujah. We are vulnerable, but valuable. Say that with me. We are vulnerable, but valuable. You see, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sepa for thee. Why? Since you are precious, the Lord says. Can you touch yourself and say, I am precious. I am precious in his sight. That's why he will not forsake you. You are valuable. You mean something to him. You are precious in his sight. You are honorable. And guess what? He says, I love you. 
What else? Let me tell you, there is nothing else in Scripture that is more profound and more powerful than that one statement. God says, I love you you that's why i will not forsake you that's why i will provide for you that's why you can live a lifetime and never seen a righteous person forsaken or their children begging bread it doesn't mean that you will not go through trouble you will go through the fire you will go through the flood but god says i will not leave you during those times i will not forsake you during those times we have all seen what it's like to go through the fire and to go through the flood but in those darkest times in those most difficult times we also know what it's like to feel the presence of God working through our lives he works in the midst of the darkness he works in the midst of the storm in our hardest most difficult of times God is still there he said I will never leave you nor forsake you but I'll be with you to the end of the age listen the, the Lord is reminding us every time that he will not forsake us Jesus Christ had to tell them a story to, to bring this message over and this is the story he told them twice it's recorded in the book of Matthew and also in the book of Luke here's what he says in Matthew 10 are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one falls to the ground apart from my father's will even the birds don't die outside of the will of God he knows when the sparrows fall he knows they are important to him. And, you know, let's watch the text. He says that two sparrows are worth a cup of coin. A cup of coin is less than a penny. It takes two cup of coins to make 1.2 cents. So one cup of coin is less than a penny. It's less than the smallest designation of coin that we have. If you got a penny, you can buy two sparrows. Isn't that something? But look, look, look how this thing shifts in, in, in Luke. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? Now, you ladies who like to shop, you know what's going on here, right? If you buy one, you pay a penny. If you buy two, you pay a penny. But if you got two pennies, you get an extra one, free. Isn't that what it says? Yeah. If you got two copper coins, you got five sparrows. So one is free. Imagine this thing is so inexpensive, they're giving it away free. How much does a sparrow worth? It's worth less than the smallest coin that you have. So if you take a penny and you buy a sparrow, they need to give you change. Are you getting it? You can ask them for your change. And it's so inexpensive, they will even give it away free. And the Lord says, I care about those things that don't even have any earthly value. I care about them. I care about the ravens. In Jamaica, they call them by a different name. I'm not even going to try to say it here today. I care for the grass of the field and the lilies of the valley. Am I not going to care about you? In case, uh, in the crows. You care for the crows. Watch this. He cares for the ravens of the air. He cares for the grass of the field and the lilies of the field. He cares for the hairs in your head. He cares for the sparrows on the fence. And, and, and this, in, case you're, in case you're getting my notes, then that's, I give you that so you can keep it for reference. One sparrow is worth less than a penny. Here's the question. Aren't you better than many sparrows? If God takes care of the sparrows of the field, is God going to take care of you? I'm not saying the hard times. Look, the guy who wrote this, David, he was hungry one time, you know. And he had to ask for bread. Ah, you remember that story? He was hungry. He was very, very hungry. And he came to the camp and he said, man, I'm starving. Do you have any bread? And they said to him, no, we don't have any bread, but we have the show bread. We have that bread that is supposed to remind all Israel that they will never be out of bread. We have the bread that is placed in the tabernacle as a testament testimony that God is going to provide for you. 
And even though David was not a priest and he was not legally entitled to eat that bread, yet they give it to him just to say, listen, God promised you that you will never have to beg for bread, that you will never starve and die. And today, as you have given to God, here is the bread, eat it. The priests, they're baking more bread right now. But you can't wait until that is over. You're starving. You got a little bit of pasta sobriety in you. So right now, eat this bread. So David ate the bread that reminded all the world that God is going to provide for you. Say amen. So if God provided for David, is God going to provide for you? Here's a scripture that I found that I think it's so powerful that God really wrote the scripture for all of you seniors here today. In fact, for all of you ministers, especially for the ministers of the word. Here's what Hebrews 6 and 10 says. For God is not unjust to forget your work. If Pastor Sobrian, who has a very bad memory, can remember what some of you have done here at Church Church, how much more God? I was not even there when some of you did what you did for God. I don't even know all of the sacrifices you made. You know, there are people who work hard in this church, and sometimes I don't even know. In fact, I told you the story one time, and I told the police to lock him up. You remember that story? Yeah, I got a call one night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. The police, Riverdale police called me and said, Pastor, there's somebody in your church. I said, lock him up. I don't expect no members to be there. And then they called me back and said, Pastor, he, he said he has a key and he has the right to be there. And he's there to clean. I said, no member of my church is going to come 2 o'clock in the morning to clean nowhere. Lock him up. And then they, they, they said, Pastor, he told me his name is Glenville Grissel. I said, oh my God, don't lock him up. Please, don't lock him up. He's going to New York that day, and he wanted to come and clean the church before he goes, so he's there at 2 o'clock in the morning cleaning. If wasn't it, the police didn't call me, I would never know. So many of you have done so much, and nobody knows. But can I say to you that God knows? God is keeping a record, and God says he will not forget. Men may forget what you do. People may forget what you do. In fact, they may forget right away. Sometimes you just give some, something to someone, and they didn't even remember that you give them. Didn't even say thanks. Completely ungrateful, but God does not forget. He will not forget your work and your labor of love, which you have shown in his name. The work that you do in the name of God especially. The work that you do not expecting anything in return. The work that you do not expecting your payment, your remuneration. You did it out of the love of God in your heart, out of the kindness of your heart. You have worked hard. You have labored. You have toiled. You are faithful on the prayer line every morning, every midday, even in the evening sometimes. You are there faithful at church. People like uh, Brother, Brother Poppy and Brother Ferran and the others who come to clean this church more than once a week, David included, they are faithful. People like Brother Short who's faithful as an usher, as an elder, as a bus driver. Oh my God. So many things I don't even remember. I don't even know. But they are faithful. Many of you who I can't even call your name. Sister Lambert don't even call her. I mean, I can't. We're gonna be, we don't finish today if, if you list everything that she does. All of you who do work for God in this church or anywhere else, God is saying to you right now, I will not forget you. That's why you should not worry. God says, I remember what you did. And I have set aside a day to pay, pay you back. You have ministered to the saints, especially the ministers, especially but Pastor Bishop Campbell, especially those who preach the word of God and serve. Sometimes our work goes unnoticed, seems like, seems like. But God says, I watch you when you minister to the saints. I watch you. Sister Yvonne, picking up these folks and taking them home, that's ministry. Maybe you never went to Bible school and you can't preach a sermon, you know. All you can do is agree with the preacher and say, that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Everything I say, that's right. But that's ministry. That's ministry. That's ministry. You're doing it because you want the folks to come to church. And every blessing that they get, you get some of it. Amen. 
Every time you support a missionary, every time you minister to someone uh, in foreign lands who is preaching the gospel, who is winning souls, let me say to you, you receive part of that blessing. Let us never lose an opportunity to do ministry. Amen. And the writer says, not only did you minister, but you're still doing it today. Look at these seniors. They have not retired. Not retired. They have not given up. Even Brother Ferguson is walking with his cane. He's still walking. <laughs> Amen. Even though they can't stand up and, and, and do as they used to do, they're still doing they're still working for God. And may God bless you and strengthen you today that you will continue laboring for him. Amen. May God strengthen you and encourage your heart. For God says, I will not forget your work. When? When is God going to reward you? I'm saying today, tomorrow, and forever. Here's what Paul says in Philippians. For my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How is God going to give you what you need? God's going to look at the storehouse in heaven and decide, let me take from my storehouse and give you. Let me take from my riches. You know what kind of riches God have? Streets of gold, walls of jasper. Hear me, hear me. If God is taking the purest, most expensive, most refined form of gold, that's like a billion zillion carats. It is so pure and so free of impurities, it is clear like crystal. Have you ever seen gold like that? That's the kind of gold they're using for pavement. Now, if they're using that kind of gold for pavement, what do you think they have in the bank? If they're using pearls to make their gates, walls of jasper, the walls of the city is over 325 feet thick. This church from back to front is just 100 feet. Multiply it three times and add 25 feet to that. And that's the thickness of the wall. And it goes for 1,500 miles. If God is using that to make fence, what do you think he have in his storehouse? Anytime you can build a fence like that, you're rich. You agree? Anytime you will take diamonds and rubies and pearl and put it in the foundation, tell me if you're not rich. You look at a man drive a nice fancy car, you say that man is rich, right? You don't say that? You look at a nice fancy house, you say that person is rich, he got money. It's not always so, but sometimes, most times it is. So if, they take, if God is taking that kind of stuff and making pavement and making foundation, it means he has a lot. And it's according to what God has that he will give you. So if God has all of these riches, why he can't give you money to pay bus fare tomorrow? Why he can't provide for your children and your grandchildren? Why he can't give you the house that you need so you won't have to live from apartment to apartment? Why can't, why can't God bless you with your needs? Can I, can I give it to you right now really straight? Today I bless you with the blessings of God that comes from his storehouse in heaven. The blessings that make rich and add no sorrow. May it be graciously multiplied in your life. I speak that in Jesus' name. God is more than able. Amen. God is more than able. For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. That's a promise given to us in the book of Psalms. What does Mark eleven twenty four 24 says? Therefore I say unto you whatsoever, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you you shall have them. The promise of God says, whatever you need, when you pray, believe, and God will provide it. That's why the psalmist says, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor received begging bread. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have trouble. It doesn't mean not, you, you will not ask somebody for something. Because the same man who wrote this, he asked them for bread one time. You remember? But he was not a beggar cast out on the street, 
with nowhere to go and no, nothing to do and nowhere, no place to stay. I've lived by that principle. I, you know, as a preacher, I don't talk about myself. I'm not supposed to. But I think I can talk about myself in times when it doesn't make me look good. So here is it. I don't know if I ever said this to you before, but I'll tell you now. Me, Oliver Sobrine, have experienced homelessness three times in my life. I bet you never knew that. I bet you never knew that I was homeless on three occasions. When I was just four years old, we experienced a great civil war in our country where we grew up, civil unrest, and they burnt our house down. I was old enough to see them drag people in the streets, bringing a dead man into the police station where we were rescued and waiting, held up there. A, a woman seeing her dead husband coming in and literally fainted and broke down. The image is still in, etched in my mind. I can still see it as I'm talking to you. So we were homeless. But I was four years old, and it was fun. I'm telling you. That's the time when the Red Cross brought that nice flashlight to you. You remember that? Yes. And I could direct traffic in the middle of the day with my blanket over my head. Watch me directing traffic and driving through the streets. My brakes, everything working. Engine, everything working. It was fun for me to be in the midst of everybody. I didn't feel it. I was not the one with the worry. <laughs> my parents worried about that. For me, it was nothing. But I was homeless. For a long, I don't know exactly how long, but it was a long time. And then secondly, that was, I was, you know, I was not minister. The second time is after I was a preacher. After I went to Bethel Bible College and got valedictorian award and all that good stuff and came back here, top of my class, I graduated and big fuss over Pastor Sir Brian and I got this church in McDonald Lane saying, Pastor, don't go back. And I said, yes, I got to go. And they're crying and bawling and weeping over me. And i stubborn like a mule. I decided to go. When I went home, nowhere to live. Sister Rose and my daughter had to go back to their mom, her mom and her grandmother. And we are a day's journey away. And I had to move back with my mom. There was not enough room in either one of those two places for us all to stay. So Pastor Sobrian was homeless again. But it didn't bother me because I knew that I would find somewhere. Yes. And God is not going to let me down. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. I would find somewhere. It took me several weeks, but we found a little place to rent, and we moved in. No furniture. If you came to visit me, seats were provided on the floor. But, but we had guests, and we entertained. We ate our lunch and our dinner sitting on the floor. But I didn't worry because I know God will help us. It wasn't too long after somebody gave us a table. We bought some other furniture, and we were okay. But I was homeless. That's the second time, right? The third time, I was still a minister, and I'm getting ready to go to Bible school. In fact, I didn't even know where I was going. I just left, like Abraham, you know. And we went to St. Martin, and we went to Jamaica, and we went to, the Lord was saying, not here, not here, not here. And then we came over to the United States, and, and my wife is praying and saying, you know, God is going to provide a place for us and everything. And we are homeless. We don't have anywhere to go. I remember on the plane, trying to fill up that little form. Let's give you a form on the plane to fill up. And it says, home address. <laughs> Here, there's nothing more terrifying to have to write the home address that you didn't have. And we came to the United States, and I spent that summer preaching. And, you know, I knew where we were going to live next week based upon the preacher that invited us to preach that Sunday. So we moved from one church to the next, one parsonage to the next, and that's how we lived for over two or three months. Everything we had in a suitcase, they have anywhere to live. And I remember we, go, uh, Sister Rose, and I going to the to visit the school of theology in Cleveland, Tennessee, and 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 we were praying in the chapel. 
praying in the chapel, and she's saying, Lord, help us to get this scholarship to stay here. And um, after we were finished praying, the person who was taking us around, or chaperone, he took us to see all the different parts of the school and took us to the president's office. And he said, Brother Sabran, we were talking about you last week. I'm glad you, they were looking through all of the applicants for the seminary. And, and they saw my name and they said, you know, we have a scholarship for you. But it's only an academic scholarship. You got to find housing. So I said, I can't afford housing. But thank you for the scholarship. And right there and then, I got a call from a good friend of mine, Bishop C.C. C. Pratt from Canberra Heights, New York. Listen to this carefully. We don't have nowhere to live. Bishop Pratt calls me and he says, Bishop Sobrian, I'm retiring. I want you to take this church. Yeah. You know where that is? It's a district church, beautiful three-story building, all paid for. They can more than afford to put me up in somewhere to stay. And he's offering me an opportunity to pastor that church. And we talk about it, and my stupid wife <laughs> said, no. And I think back at it after, I said, well, this thing really didn't bother us, you know. It could not have. Because here it is, I got the opportunity to go and pastor a nice church with nice members, and they're going to give us a place to live. The homelessness is over, and we said no, because I want to finish school. Is that a two things happening here? Is that a, have we gone senile and stupid, or God is giving us the confidence in knowing that even in the midst of this homelessness, I have a plan for your life. After we prayed in the chapel and got an answer to the prayer right away, how can you do anything else? Another stupid thing was to come here, but I'm going to go into that today. But hear me now. Listen, I have been homeless three times. And even though it was not a big worry to me, I was homeless. Why did God allow that to happen? is so that if something like that happens to someone else, I can tell them about my experience. I can tell them that God said, God said he will not forsake us. He will not let us beg for bread. Yeah. Hear me? That's a promise from the word of God. I have been young and now I am much older. <laughs> And I have never seen Pastor Sir Brian or any other righteous, faithful Christian begging bread or forsaken in this life. God will not forsake you. You will be down and out. You will go through hard times. You will go through struggle. But God will come through for you every time. God never wanted us in Cambria Heights. God never wanted us in California. God wanted us here. So you can make all of my hair to drop out according to the will of God. Did I say that? <laughs> but God knows the hair upon our head, so God is, thank God you know that. Amy, listen here, seriously, seriously. It don't matter what you're going through right now, I just come by to tell you, God knows. And God says, I will not forsake you. Can you, can you put your hand on your chest and say, God is not going to forsake me? God never forsook me. Never. It's not because I didn't have trouble. Not because I didn't have needs. But I know that God cared about me. Look at you. Eh? Look at you. Look how far you've come. Look how God has kept you all these years. Look how the devil wanted to destroy you, and you are here. Hear me, whatever the devil wants to do, it didn't happen. You are here in church on a Sunday afternoon giving thanks and praise to God. Lift your hands and let the Lord know how grateful you are. Hallelujah. God says, I will take care of you. I was young and now I am old. David says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. When is this going to happen? Listen, Paul says, there's a, there's a beautiful scripture given to us in Corinthians. I just want to read one verse. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. You know what that means? That means God is going to take care of you 
all the way through your life, even into the other life. Because here's what the scripture means. He's the first fruit of them that slept. So even though your loved one died and it broke your heart and you're sad over that and the devil comes and speaks into your heart and said, God don't love you. He took away your loved one. God is not there with you. God don't care about you. Sister Janice Blair is in her midst today. And I know the devil is kind of speaking into your heart. God took away your son because he don't love you. Listen, the Bible says Jesus was the first fruits of those that slept. So because he rose, our loved ones will as well. Amen? So the provision of God is not only in this life, but the life to come. I'm, I'm going to finish in a minute. So we got some, what, what are we talking about? We got some do's and don'ts in the same Psalm, Psalm 37. Here's what it says. Let me talk about the don'ts first. Don't fret over evildoers. Say amen. amen. Don't be envious of iniquity. I, I want you to say amen of all of this, right? Don't be, don't be envious of the iniquity of people. Don't fret over those who prosper. Don't fret over those who do evil. Don't be angry with God or anyone else. Don't embrace wrath. Don't fret yourself to do any kind of evil. Here is what you should do. Trust in the Lord and do good. Say amen. Dwell in the land. Live. Live. God will provide. Feed on the... I like the way the version puts it. Feed on the faithfulness of God. If you, didn't, if you didn't eat this morning, I want, to, I, want to, I want to save it all assurance. It's because you didn't want to. Isn't that right? Isn't God a provider? Isn't God a sustainer? Hasn't God taken care of you? Did we just get here by ourselves? No, my friend. No. God has been keeping us and providing for us and sustaining us all this time. It is the sin to doubt him that he's going to continue doing that. Don't doubt God. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Enjoy the desires of thine heart. Enjoy it. God will give it to you. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit your ways. You know, give your life over to God. Trust in him again, he says it. Rest in the Lord. Rest. Relax. Give up. Have confidence that God will take care of you. That thing that is bothering you, that you're stressed over and you're confused over, can you just put it aside? Just rest from it. Rest means give it up to God. And don't worry about it anymore. Take it to Calvary and say, Lord, I bring this thing before you. It is not your will. It is not your desire for me to stress over these problems because you promised me that you will take care of me. And then wait, wait patiently on the Lord. Wait patiently. And then I want to close with a prayer. I think this is one of the most beautiful prayers in all of the scripture. And it's a prayer, for, especially for the seniors. Here's what it says. Psalms 37. I've, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Or is God sees begging bread? Here is the prayer. Psalms 71 verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not. Till I have shown thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. For thou art my hope, O oh Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. What a beautiful prayer. The psalmist is saying, Lord, I have always trusted in you. From a young man, a young woman, I have always trusted in you. And when I am old and gray-headed, do not forsake me. Don't forsake me. And God says, I will not forsake you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not turn my back upon you because you are valuable, because you mean a lot to me, because you are precious, you are honorable, and most of all, because I love you. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take comfort in knowing today that God loves you. God loves you. And he will take care of you. If I can say one thing to these seniors today, 
is God will take care of you. Don't worry about how much you have in your retirement. Don't worry if you don't have anything in your retirement. It's not your retirement going to take care of you. <laughs> it's not the job going to take care of you. It's God. Amen. It's God. He is the one that's going to take care of you. So trust in the Lord. Our younger people today, I want to, I want to tell you from today, trust in God. Choose God. Put your faith and your trust and your confidence in Him. And He will see you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I pray for you today? Let me ask, first of all, is there someone who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You have not yet experienced this beautiful salvation that only Christ can give. And you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Raise your hand so I can pray for you today. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm thankful that you're all Christians today. And I want you to invite some who are not Christians to church next week. Amen? So that the power of the gospel can reach them. If you are watching me via social media today and you have not given your heart to the Lord, please give me an opportunity to pray with you right now that you can make that very important step to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're also going to pray for all the teachers who are going back to work. Washington, D.C., in PG County. The kids are not going back yet, but the teachers go first. I want to pray for our teachers. You know, there's war unleashed upon our teachers, upon Christians everywhere. Believe what I'm telling you. There's a special interest group right now that have their sights set upon the church and upon Christians, and they have declared war on us. And they are in our schools, they are in our churches, they seem to be everywhere with one goal, one motive, to destroy the influence of the church, which they cannot do, but they're trying. And as Christians, you better pray. We better pray. We better trust God. I want to pray for our teachers. They are under so much demonic and spiritual attack that many of you may never know. I also want us to pray for Kira. She's in the hospital. She's sick. I pray for God to touch her. And there are many others today with special needs. Bow your hearts and let us pray today. Father, I thank you. I honor you. I worship you. I praise you. I bless you today. For you are God of all and Lord of all. I bring these needs before you. I bring our teachers, our students, as they face this great enemy of the church, enemy of Christianity, the Lord, you will help them and guide their footsteps and lead them and direct them and strengthen their hearts and their resolve, knowing that you are God. There is none greater than you. None. None stronger than you. None more powerful than you will keep us and sustain us through the most difficult of times. Bless them, Lord, and help them today. Pray for Kira in the hospital. You will touch and heal her, Lord. I pray today for Mother Harley, who is at home, not doing well. And I thank you for healing her body today, oh Lord. Touch and encourage her heart and her family. I pray for Abigail also, who is recovering from surgery. Lord, that you will continue to lay your hand upon her life and touch and strengthen her. And so many others today in this congregation, I ask you, Lord, to remember the sick in our midst and to minister healing in their body. I pray for all of our seniors. Lord, I ask you to encourage their heart and give them that assurance and that confidence that you will take care of them. Yes, Lord, you will take care of them. In the name of Jesus, you will take care of them. Oh God, help us today. Help us. Those things for which I did not ask you, I pray God that you will still grant them. You will still grant them. For I commit everyone and everything into your hands. 
Bless us today with the blessings of God that makes rich and add no sorrow as I commit everyone into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you all. Our worship group will sing a chorus. Do we have any announcements today? Okay. Appreciate Sister Maxine also. And I also want you to continue praying for her family and the recent loss in their home. And don't forget, if you have not yet given your contribution for the van, it's not too late. It's not too late. I was looking at that payment book, and the payment book rubbed all the sheen off the bus. So let us, let us put back some sheen on it. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. Seniors, God bless you. I'm supposed to be up there too. <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. On behalf of my family, the Gray family, and the Clark family, we would like to just thank each and every one of you. If you called, if you prayed, if you visited, we just want to thank you for your support and for your continued prayers um, for us as we mourn. I don't know a better word for as we mourn. So Sean and Kamisha Clark and their family would like to just thank you. And my family, the Gray family, would like to thank you as well. Um, Sean and Kamisha will be celebrating their 19th wedding anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. In the midst of the storm, there is joy. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Um, please remember, the men, please remember there will be men's fellowship this Friday evening at 7.30. So please come out. It will be here in the building. Um, Thursday evening prayer is on the Zoom line. Please remember that. The Thursday evening prayer is on the Zoom line. There will be fasting this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and that will also be on the prayer line. Um, August 21st, please, this church, Ebenezer Church of God, we get information and we bring it in-house, amen? And we want you to take advantage of the information that we do bring here to the church. So Monday the 21st, that's tomorrow, we will have the county executive, Angela also Brooks, right here to talk to us in a round table about your business, the business that you have, the business that you want to have. So please come out between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m as she speaks to you. 1 to 3 p.m. I'm sorry? 1 to 3 p.m. 1, 1 to 3 p.m. And if you do know other Caribbean businesses, please invite them out. This is where you can ask questions. Get your questions answered about the businesses that you currently have and how you can enhance them and about the businesses that you want to have. Okay, so between 1 to 3 p.m., please come out tomorrow. Also, the United Holiness Church will be having their banquet, I believe it's this Saturday. Please see Sister Pauline if you, do, if you would like to go. Again, Sunday school on Tuesday and Bible study on Wednesday is 7.30 and is on the social media, YouTube and Facebook. But um, son, um, Bible study is also here in the building. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think those are our announcements for today. Thank Blessings. You. Thank you, Sister Max. Thank you, man. Good to see Glow and her husband today. He's in behind the camera. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, we got to correct the time for that meeting with also Brooks. Let's have the real time. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. That is on tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Let's all stand and be dismissed. Thank you.
The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the comfort, the rest remain, abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.